Casey, if you're talking, I can't hear you. I'm not sure if anybody else can. Uh oh, did I hit my magical button on my headphone? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, then I will start back over. Thank you, Daryl. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming back after we attempted to do this the other week and I got called out. So I appreciate everybody's patience. Um, so thank you again for joining me for the Summer Materials Ordering Process webinar. It's hard to believe that um, I know we just wrapped up Tales and Tales and now it's time to start thinking about Oceans of Possibility, our 2022 theme of oceanography. And the artist for next summer is Sophie Blackall. So if you have been on uh, the CSLP Facebook page or the website, you've probably seen bits and pieces of the artwork already. I'm really excited about this theme because we live in Florida and we are surrounded by ocean and gulf. So I think there's gonna be a lot that we're gonna be able to do with that theme next year. Uh, for those who are new, and I know that we've had a lot of staff changes in libraries across Florida. So for those of you who are meeting me for the first time, my name is Casey Shiley. I am the Youth Services Consultant for the Florida Library Youth Program or FLIP as we call it here at the Library uh, Division of Library and Information Services. And in keeping with the theme for next year, um, I would love it if you would take a moment to share your favorite underwater animal in the chat and which library you're coming from. And if you happen to have a fun fact about that underwater creature, um, you can tell my kids have made me watch a lot of wild crats because I call them creatures a lot. <laughs> um, but my favorite is the manatee. Uh, I was very fortunate many, many years ago to take uh, a group of fifth graders down to uh, Homosassa and swim with the manatees, which was just an amazing experience. Um, and the fun fact about manatees, if you did not know, they have a never ending supply of teeth. So again, just share your favorite uh, underwater animal in the chat so we can get to know each other a little bit more and which library you're from. So today, as I work through this, um, as a reminder, this webinar is scheduled for an hour and a half, um, just because it's a lot of information. Um, but if you have to take off after an hour, we are, as Daryl said, we are recording it. So I will email out the recording and it will also be on our YouTube. But I know that that's a little unusual for us. We usually go for an hour. Um, but today we're going to be covering in our overview section, we're going to talk a little bit about FLIP allotments and what those are, voucher codes, the Collaborative Summer Library Program, and allowable materials because this money can only be used for certain items. We will also go through the ordering process and just some of the different things involved in ordering, um, shipping costs, uh, the deadline, which spoiler alert, because I know I know people are gonna ask, uh, December 31st, it's the same deadline we've had for the last two years. And then we're gonna take a drive to the CSLP shop so I can actually demonstrate using the website, um, using the voucher codes and how to sort of check to make sure that you are doing it correctly, um, which I think is helpful whether you've done this before or not, because you know we do it once a year, so it's easy to forget. Um, and if you've never done it before, I know I, I like seeing somebody do it before I have to jump in. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our overview. So the FLIP allotment we is open to any Florida public library. Uh, libraries opt in to receive the allotment that they can then use to purchase certain materials. Um, and then this money is funded through the Library Services and Technology Act, which is administered through the Institute of Museum and Library Services. So you'll hear me refer to LSTA a lot. Um, because this is federal money, it means there are things that we can and cannot spend this money on. And we will talk a little bit more about that. One of the good things about the FLIP allotment is that it's different from grants, which means there's no application process. There's no educational requirement. And the only real requirement other than using it for what it's intended to be used for is that the libraries who decide that they want to receive this money are then agreeing to complete the summer program statistics at the end of the summer program. The allotment is meant to help supplement the cost of your library summer library program. It's not meant to be the entire funding that your library spends on it. 
Um, we don't track that again. This is not like an LSTA grant where you have to have certain match. Um, it's really just a good reminder that because there are going to be items that um, the money cannot be used for, or you may get your allotment and just know that, you know, I always have libraries who are very kind to let me know that they would gladly spend more money if I have more money to give them. <laughs> Um, so it's, it's meant to help, even though it's hopefully not the only funding your library has to put towards the program. So we provide the allotments through what we call voucher codes. Um, we're not sending checks or money directly out to your library. You will receive a voucher code in your allotment letter, which I will send out in an email. And I send those emails out to whoever the designated point of contact for your library is. And I also CC the director. And the reason I do that is, that, well, there's a couple different reasons. One, and I'm sure those of you who've been on these webinars with me before are probably tired of hearing me say this, but I am a firm believer that important information should not sit with just one person if we can avoid it especially right now, I know that things are just very unpredictable. And so, um, you know, we may have staff members who are out unexpectedly for several weeks. Um, and so it's always good that information is sitting with more than one person in case that happens. Um, I also do it because sometimes staff changes and I'm not necessarily notified. Um, and that way, at least if I'm seeing the director and maybe a youth services staff member has moved on, um, it's my information and my email is still reaching somebody. Um, but I do not continue to, to CC them on, it's just that, that initial allotment email. We do ask that this code is kept confidential um, because again, even though it's not directly tied to money, you know, it's not like I'm sending you a Visa gift card or something like that. It is still tied to money in a roundabout way. Um, and so we it works like a coupon, but we wanna keep it safe like a credit card, kind of like our library cards, right? <laughs> um, and the allotment is all inclusive. So it includes materials and shipping costs. We used to pay, pay shipping, um, shipping costs separately, um, but because CSLP took the store under their wing, it all just got wrapped up into one. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we uh, talk about shipping. So CSLP, the Collaborative Summer Library Program, if you are new to this, and this is the first time you've heard of CSLP, they are a national nonprofit. They are a consortium of states and territories working together to provide summer reading materials. And the great thing about CSLP is that uh, because they're pulling so many resources, it helps them create and develop uh, a higher end product where we can get professional illustrators to do the artwork and that sort of thing. We here at the division, we pay for a subscription for every public library in the state to be a part of CSLP. So not only does that give us access to the materials, but it also means that you all as library staff can actually be involved in the creation of future summer programming themes and slogans, manuals, materials, so you can be involved um, as much or as little as you like. And of course, I always love to encourage people to get involved. Um, Florida has so many creative people and so many creative youth services staff um, that I, I love it when I hear that you all are getting involved in C with CSLP. Um, and Luke Kralik, the organizational coordinator, actually recently held a webinar for us that went a little bit more in depth about CSLP. Um, whenever I send my follow-up email, I will send that link as well if you're interested because he did talk about, you know, how they're structured as an organization, um, but he also talked about committees and what, you know, which committees they are actively looking for people right now. Um, so it's a great, a great way to get involved. Um, so you will all order your materials directly through their CSLP store, which again, we will go through and actually show you at the end. So allotments are great, 
But as I mentioned, they don't pay for everything because of the federal requirements. So you will hear me talk about LSTA approved or allowable materials. I tend to say allowable materials because it just rolls off my tongue a little bit easier, but I use those terms interchangeably. They don't mean different things. Um, but the allotments may only be used to purchase allowable items. And the great thing is that if you're on the CSLP shop, they have a, a category that is specific to Florida's approved items. Um, and, and again, when we take a drive through the website, I will show you how to access that page. Um, I will also send you the direct link when I email you out. Um, but as you can see on the screenshot, one of the easiest ways to tell is to look at the categories that are listed next to an item and you can see that Florida is listed there. So that's one of the easiest ways to see if something you're looking at is an allowable item or not. We do ask that if your library is going to order LSTA approved items and non-LSTA approved items, that you place those orders separately. Um, I know a lot of libraries, you know, they they want to purchase the the squid hats and the socks. There's socks this year if you haven't seen them. Um, and those are all things that we cannot spend federal money on. So we do ask that you submit those orders as two separate orders. Um, if for, especially for those of you who've been around for, for more than a couple years, and so you're sort of in tune with what should be considered allowable and what's not. Um, if you happen to notice as you're, you know, walking around the shop that if you see an item and you think it should be on the allowable list and it's not, um, please feel free to send me an email with the link. I know, I think last year um, they added a new set of bags after we had already submitted you know, our approved list. And so we, there was a whole set of bags that were not, the system didn't recognize. Um, and it was just because they were added after we had already gone through and done our check to make sure everything. And I think the same thing happened a couple of years ago with a certain set of bookmarks. Um, so any bag, any bookmark, any poster, those should all be allowable. So if you ever have any questions and think you may have found something that should be and it's not, let me know and I'm happy to look into it. So before we move on to ordering, is there any questions about CSLP, the allotments, vouchers? All right, I'm gonna keep moving forward, but of course, if you have any questions pop up, feel free to put them in the chat or to hit that hand raise button. So the ordering part, which is the fun part, right? You get to spend someone else's money. That's always fun. So you will place your order in the CSLP shop, which is located on their website at cslpreads.org. And if you read that as cslspreads.org, you're not alone. I think a lot of us do that. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Um, CSLP has been working very hard over the last several months on rebuilding their website from the ground up. And so while there's not a lot as a user, you will probably notice there have been some changes as a result of that. One of the big changes is that you no longer have to log in to place your order. Um, you can place your order just using your voucher code and your information. One of the other things that I noticed is that um, before, for those who've been here, I know for me, anytime I went on there to access the online manual, I had to put in my code every single time. Whereas now, once you put it in, it seems to remember. Um, I've, not, I've only had to log in once, which is kind of nice because then I don't have to go digging through my emails to try to find that, that online manual code every time. The other benefit is that because they've rebuilt the website, it just runs faster and it's a little bit more reliable. Um, and so I know sometimes getting on here, it sort of felt like you were sitting there watching, you know, the little engine that could try to puff its way up a, up a big steep hill. So it, everything should be running a little bit faster and a little bit smoother, which is always a much more enjoyable experience. 
Now, that being said, you don't have to log into your account, um, but if you want to, you certainly can. Uh, so if you don't have an account and you would like one, or you don't have the password or you don't remember the password, um, you can either just create a new account or if you had an existing account, submit for a, a password reset. One thing I do wanna point out is that I do not have any passwords for any CSLP accounts except for my own. Um, I know that I think it can be kind of confusing because we deal with CSLP and then for those of you who also do the statistics at the end of the summer program, we work in counting opinions. So it's very easy to get those two things mixed up because they both start with C and they both have to do with summer, summer programming. Um, and I do send out passwords for counting opinions. The CSLP accounts are not like that. It is very similar to a patron asking you if you have their Gmail password, um, which as much as we'd love to help, we just don't have that information. Um, so it, again, they've got a an easy, like most websites, the whole I've forgotten my password, reset it thing that you can do directly through the website. So the ordering process, the process itself is actually quite simple. Um, you know, step one, go to the website. Um, and as I said earlier, when I email you, I will also email you the Florida specific link to take you straight to our page of approved items. Um, if you do access the, the shop through that link, I do wanna caution you to be careful as you start clicking on items um, to make sure that you don't get out of our state specific area and then start adding unapproved items for your voucher code. It can happen very easily, um, especially, you know, I've done it where I've gone in using the Florida link and then at some point I just wanna go back and I hit the shop and I'm sitting in the main shop. Um, so again, that's why it's nice that they have that category section next so you can kind of double check that what you're looking at is a Florida approved item. The second step is clicking on that shop tab and then adding your items. Um, again, that's that's that and unboxing the items, I think are the two, two most fun parts of that process. Um, so you'll just wanna make sure that you're going through and you're adding those LSTA items. And then the third step, when you've finished shopping and you go to your cart, that is when you're going to enter your voucher code during your checkout process. Now, the box for this is not automatically visible. There's actually a link and a box at the very top. And again, I will show you this later when we go to the website. And you actually have to click to add your voucher code, which will then bring up the box. But it is at the very, very top of your cart when you go in. Um, one thing, and CSLP has this reminder on their website, is that you have to add all of your items to your cart before you apply your voucher code. If you apply your voucher code and then you continue to add items, it will not automatically apply to those items. And so let's say you're in there and you just, you know, you're adding items, you apply your voucher code and you realize, oh, you know what, I can still go back and spend another $40, $50. You'll wanna make sure that you reapply that voucher code. And then at the very end, you just wanna make sure that your code applied to all of your items before you hit submit. So double checking your code before you hit submit is the first line of defense against accidentally purchasing unapproved items or overspending your allotment amount. And then there's just the quick recap, which I will not sit here and read because I know you all can read just fine. Um, I just really want to emphasize that check your order before submitting because you should have a zero dollar balance. So let's talk a little bit about manuals because I do get a lot of questions about manuals each year. Um, they really can be a great source of for ideas and inspiration, um, especially if you find yourself getting stuck. Um, I know sometimes, at least in recent years, some of the themes have really been easier to plan for certain age groups more so than others. Um, I know last year a lot of you all mentioned that you were having a really hard time tying the theme to your, your older teens and your adult, uh, your adult patrons. Um, and so the manual can be really great for kind of helping you get unstuck with some of that inspiration. Um, and also that conversation we had earlier about being involved, 
the manual is a great way that you can be involved, um, whether you're able to actually join a committee. Um, and if you're not able to join a committee, but you still want to participate and contribute, um, CSLP is actually currently, right now as we speak, accepting program ideas for the manual for the 2023 theme. And you can access that through their website. If you So if you have a great idea, um, their due date for that is October 29th, 2021. Um, and the theme is, I think, friendship and kindness and unity. Um, so if you don't have the time or the ability to dedicate to being on a committee, you can still contribute, which is really nice. Each library is responsible for purchasing their own manuals. We do not purchase the manuals on a statewide level because we know that not every library uses them. And so sometimes that can create confusion when staff go to the CSLP webpage and they're looking for an access code um, because the, the webpage has a note telling them to contact their, their state representative, which is me for Florida. Um, we're a little bit different. I think that CSLP has put up a notice about us and maybe one other state um, that we don't do that. Um, we're just a little bit different. Um, you know, every library in Florida has different needs. And so we sort of wrapped that money back in so that each library can make their own decision on that. Um, but one thing I do want to remind you of is that if you do purchase a physical manual, that does give you access to the online manual. You may have to email them to get the code from them. Um, but I, I like to bring that up because, uh, you know, we're all trying to be uh, good stewards of our money and stretch our dollar. So um, I hate to hear when a library purchased both a physical manual and an online manual and they really only needed to purchase one. This is also really helpful if you order you know, a USB, which is a very tiny thing to have to keep up with. Um, and so if you accidentally lose your USB, it's nice to know that you still have access to that online manual. And the great thing about the online manual is that um, if new ideas or new things come up after the print manual has already gone to print, they can continue to add and they have continued to add to the online manual. So there are, every year, there are things in that online manual that aren't necessarily in the physical manual. So even if you do like having the, the physical manual with you, it's still nice to hop on and check out that online manual to see what else might be there. If you do purchase an online manual, um, that access code can sometimes be tricky to find, can't it? I can't see you, but I know somebody is nodding their head in very firm agreement. When you purchase the online access and you get your email confirmation, in that email confirmation underneath where it says online manual, that is where they stick that code. So that code should be underneath there. Um, but if push comes to shove and you cannot find the access code, email that customer service email address, which is on their website with your order number so that they know that you did purchase access. Um, and they can get you hooked up with the with your access code. I did want to issue just a, a quick reminder about bags because I know that bags have really gone up in popularity over the last two years because of you know take and makes and and everybody having to do programming a little bit differently. I did want to put a, a reminder out there that LSTA money cannot be used for incentives or prizes. So if you're purchasing bags with your allotment, those bags um, cannot be used as prizes. And Darlene asked, can we put in an order for the online manual separately? Of course, absolutely. I mean, whatever, um, you know, I actually, I have a couple libraries who will do that. They'll buy, they'll use their voucher to buy the manual access first because then they can start planning and they know better how they wanna spend the rest of their money. So absolutely. And typically what I'll do, Darlene, with that, because I'm trying to make sure that I track how much of each allotment um, is spent. So if I notice that, um, sometimes it's very obvious, um, you know, like I have one library in particular, they do it every year. So I know to look for that. Um, sometimes it's really obvious if it's just, you know, a $20 order um, and somebody still has several hundred 
Um, usually if I don't see another order come by and we're getting towards the end, I will double check to say, hey, I noticed that you only spent you know, $100 out of your $500 allotment. Were you planning on purchasing more or did you want me to reallocate that money to another library? Um, so I'll always just follow up, double check, make sure that, that everyone's spending their money. But yes, as long as it's in by the deadline, December 31st. So point of note, um, so I do want to call attention. If you see a slide with a megaphone, <laughs> that megaphone is there for a very important reason. I love good surprises. Nobody loves surprises that involve money they were not planning on spending. So if you see a megaphone on a slide, that means I am talking about a potential area where someone might accidentally cost their library money, and I don't think anybody wants to do that. Um, so I do want to, to pull out a few things. Just again, you know, we live, we learn. Um, your library is responsible for paying the cost of any money, any amount spent over the allotment amount provided. Your, your library is also responsible for the cost of any non-allowable approved items that are spent or that's ordered in that order. And then if there's any shipping costs associated with returning items that may have been ordered by accident or um, just because you decide you want to do something different, um, the shipping costs really, really, that's going to be on, on the library. Um, now, on that note about returning items, CSLP has gone on the record to say that they cannot guarantee that they will accept returns on materials if those materials were ordered due to a library staff member ordering incorrect items or overspending their allotment amount. You know, if you receive an item that's damaged or you were shorted, you know, you ordered five posters and you only got four, CSLP will always find a way to fix it. And, you know, they had to do that for me whenever I ordered, you know, placed the, the big end of end of season bag order. Uh, one of my boxes was short a bag um, and they just sent me another one. Um, they've always been really good about fixing any mistakes that happened either because you know, CSLP made the mistake or something happened during the shipping process and things were damaged, um, they will always work to correct it. Um, at the end of the day, they are a nonprofit. And so they get to a point in the ordering timeline where they cannot keep taking back items because then they're going to lose money. Um, and so I know, you know, we want to we want to be good partners with them and we want to make sure that we're, we're doing things correctly on our end. Um, so just keep that in mind. So along those same lines, uh, I know especially for some of our larger libraries, if your library does share that voucher code among multiple people, even though I may have one point of contact and you may be that person sitting in the room right now, please make sure that everyone who is placing an order is trained on the ordering process. Um, we want to avoid mistakes that cost your library's money unexpectedly, um, and we certainly don't want something to happen just because somebody didn't take the time to, to get trained um, on, on what they were doing. But I am going to throw you a lifesaver. So there are, I do, you know, over the last two years, we've developed some tips for avoiding these mistakes. Again, we, we live, we learn. Um, and so I try to pass those lessons learned on to all of you um, so that we can avoid them in the future. Um, again, that first line of defense is checking your cart total after you apply your voucher card, but before you hit submit. You should have a $0 balance. If you don't have a $0 balance, then either you've overspent or there's items in there um, that are not allowable. Once you hit submit, you will get an automated email confirmation. Check that confirmation as soon as you receive it, again, just to make sure you have that $0 balance. Because tech tech is going to tech, right? You know, I think we had 
um, a couple, uh, maybe two instances where somebody put in their voucher code and just something went wonky with the system. It happens. Um, but the earlier we know that there's a problem, the earlier we can fix it. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that if you continue to receive emailed invoices, check them immediately. Um, I have to be able to correct and pay for any missed invoices by the end of my fiscal year. And my, my fiscal year runs July 1st to June 30th. And I know some of you are on a different fiscal year than that, um, which means that I have to have everything corrected in the March timeline to make sure I can get it through our purchasing. Um, what I cannot do is try to fix a missed payment in a new fiscal year that happened in the previous fiscal year. Um, and so if you're continuing to receive email invoices from CSLP, check it for me. Um, because we've had some of those go unnoticed um, and then we've had um, issues that it was just too late to, to do anything about. And I certainly don't want to put anybody again in that situation where suddenly their library is having to spend money that they were not planning on spending. Um, always ask the question, I would rather look into an issue and realize we have no issue. Um, and again, we're working with with an, a national organization that is working with 50 states plus territories. And so it can be easy for things to fall through the gaps. And we try to put a lot of checks and balances in place, but sometimes things just happen. So you've double checked everything and then you get your confirmation or you get your order and oops, something happened, right? Something still went wrong. There was a mistake. The system didn't pick up your voucher code. Um, last year we had one library who their voucher code went through, but for some reason when they uploaded our voucher allotment amounts, there's, I think only uploaded, it was a very random number. It was like 115 when their allotment was like $750. Um, and that was just a weird software glitch, um, because they do happen. So if something does happen, um, you know, and again, this also applies if you receive damaged or missing items, contact that customer service email as soon as possible with your order ID so that CSLP can begin to work with you to correct that issue. I will ask that if the issue is that a voucher code did not apply, if you will also CC me on it, that will help me make sure that I know that so I can keep that in the back of my mind so I can check on it to make sure that I get invoiced um, and, and that there's not a gap there. Just a couple more tidbits um, and I will show you the order form later. Um, but again, this some of these are, are live and learn situations. When you are filling out your order, please avoid using your library's abbreviations when filling out your library's information. Um, I do wanna go on the record to say that Washington County did not do this. Um, I don't know if Joy or Zidra are in the room, um, but if you are, thank you for letting me um, unknowingly use your library as an example. Um, so please make sure you are writing out your entire, you know, your library system's name. Um, it's really hard to, you know, if if we know we have a missing invoice, it's really hard for me to go to CSLP and say, hey, you know, I'm looking for Washington County Public Library and they're searching for Washington County Public Library and they're coming back to me saying, I don't have record that they placed an order. Um, it, it makes it really difficult because again, I'm working with over a hundred libraries. They're working with 50 states plus territories. Um, and so the, as detailed as we can be with our information, the easier it is to make sure that we're not having gaps. The other thing I do wanna request is that if your library system is having the branch libraries place their order separately, to please include the main library system name listed on the allotment. So I use Brevard County as an example here. So if Cocoa Beach is placing their own order, then we would ask that they put Brevard County dash Cocoa Beach. So that way, um, 
you know, we're not up here trying to Google search every individual library to remember which system they're a part of, um, because my memory is not what it used to be. <laughs> Um, I will also include a reminder about these in the allotment email when I send that out. So you've placed your order, what now? So this is really the easier part. Um, you can track your order through the CSLP website, which is a really nice feature. Um, and I will show you where to do that when we take a drive around the website. I will also verify with each of you that you have received all your materials as you, you know, as you ordered them. I have to do this before I can pay the invoice. So the sooner we can check orders um, and, you know, make any corrections that need to be made, um, the better. Denise said, last year I got my order so quickly. They re they have really done really well the last couple, I mean, you know, the, the year before last, we had some unexpected international um, issues that made some of that, a little more difficult um, but same thing you know I placed a big bag order and I had it within three weeks it was really amazing Susan asked can you please go over again where we will find the access code um, that yes Susan when you order online access to the manual you will get an automated email when you open up that email and you see the line on there where um, it says the the manual, you know, the online, you purchase the online manual. Um, Luke told me that the access code should be right underneath that on that, um, on that order confirmation. And so, and, and again, if you can't find it, you can always email them with your order information, your order ID, and they will, they are more than happy to share that. But it can be a little tricky, I think. Um, and, and, I res and I get my manual code different from all of you all. So last year there was a lot of, where's, where's, the, where's the online manual code? And I was ordering CSLP going, okay, because it's different for me, where, where do they go? So it is, it's very easy. So, you, you know, when you get that, you may want to then maybe archive that email somewhere, you can access it easily. But again, the nice thing is that so far, it seems to remember that I've logged in so I don't have to log in every single time, which is really nice. All right, so before we move on to shipping and deadline information and the demonstration, are there any other questions about the ordering, the process, where to go? Any any lessons anybody learned they want to share in the chat? <laughs> All right. Well, of course, any questions, please keep them coming. So the good thing about shipping, the costs have, oh, uh, when do you anticipate we should receive our codes? The online manual code, it should you sh that should be an almost instant turnaround. Um, I would say you should get that. Just like any online ordering you do, you usually receive a pretty immediate confirmation email. It should happen that way. I think they have it set up to automatically do that. Vouchers, I'm going to start sending out this week. Um, I always wait to send them out until after I do this webinar. Um, so depending on where you are in the alphabet, because <laughs> I have to send those emails out individually. Um, so you should be getting them within the next week, week and a half. Um, so I would say if, let me pull up a calendar. I would say if you have not received it in two weeks, check your spam folder. That's always step up. I end, I end up in a lot of people's junk folders. I'm trying not to take that personally, um, <laughs> but I do for some reason. There's something about my email that, that likes to go to the spam folder. Um, check there first. And then if you still don't see it, send me an email. Um, sometimes I get blocked from people's email. Um, or sometimes someone may have sent me an email address and there's a small typo in it. And it won't necessarily bounce back or, my, or the bounce back gets stuck behind our firewall. You know, te tech is going to tech, right? Um, 
And if for some reason there is a delay on me getting those out, I will make sure to send an email out. Um, as I think, you know, going back to when I tried to do this the first time, sometimes things happen, especially right now. Um, so if it looks like there's going to be a delay, I will do my best to send an email out just to let you know that. But um, I know time is ticking away, so I'm going to start working on those today. So if you are the Volusias in the Washington counties, um, it, it might be a week and a half <laughs> for you. <laughs> so the shipping costs are based on price, price tier. And so, um, you know, it's kind of easy for you to look and figure out what, what your shipping cost is going to be um, just by what your allotment is. Um, there are some some of our bigger libraries, especially, um, you probably know if your library requires a lift gate service. Um, if you do have a larger order, you may want to consider adding on that $45 for inside delivery. That is strictly up to you all. Um, that's a local decision. Um, I, I would imagine that if you have a $13,000, $14,000 order, it might be nice to spend $45 and have them bring it inside for you. Um, another question I get frequently is, um, especially if libraries are still trying to figure out what works best for their own system, is you know if they have multiple locations, should they you know place separate orders and have them go to the different you know to the different locations? Again, that's a local decision. If I were you, I would do the math and see, um, you know, would you be spending five times as much in shipping versus having it all come to one? Are your different locations far enough away that it would ultimately balance out when you consider having to transport them? Um, at the end of the day, it's, it's a local decision. I'm always happy to talk it out if somebody wants to. Um, So if you are one of those libraries that require a pallet as opposed to just some boxes thrown in UPS, historically, I cannot 100% guarantee that they will do this, but historically, they have actually called ahead of time to schedule that delivery. Um, because of this, it is good practice to add a backup contact name and phone number in the order notes, and I will show you where that is when we go to the website in case you are unavailable because if the delivery service is unable to schedule delivery with somebody and the order has to be shipped back that is one of the things that your library could be responsible for paying the cost of um, so i should also probably have a giant megaphone on here um, I will say again, historically, they have made three attempts before sending an item back or sending an order back to CSLP. And last year, um, you know, one of the delivery drivers even went so far as to contact CSLP, who then contacted me so I could reach out to the library to try to find somebody who was available to accept this order. Again, I cannot 100% guarantee that they are going to go through that every time. So I would just recommend having a backup person on that list just to avoid the issue. Um, the shipping timeline, um, it's a first come first serve when it comes to CSLP shipping it out. Um, this is taken directly from their website. The good thing is that our voucher orders at least are due by December 31st. And so uh, barring any more international crises, you know, you should be receiving your orders with plenty of time um, before your summer program begins. Now, if you decide you want to order, you know, privately, your library wants to, to order privately with your own funds after that December 31st, then that would kind of give you an idea of when you need to order by. So here's my megaphone again. <laughs> Shipping and non-allowable, non-LSTA items. So as I said before, if your library wants to order items that your voucher does not apply to, that order really needs to be made separately. Because if your library decides to order, place that order with both types of items, um, then your library is going to be responsible for the additional shipping cost for those non-LSTA items. 
Um, and that could be because it, you know, puts it into a higher shipping cost tier. But even if it doesn't, um, you know, the purpose of this money is to help cert, you know, help your library purchase certain items. This money is not intended to pay for shipping for non-approved items. So I'm a visual person and I like examples because that helps things stick to my brain a little better. So for example, if I receive a $300 allotment and I decide to place a $600 order that includes bags, reading logs, t-shirts, and toys, half of those items are LSTA approved and half of them are not. So I, my library is then responsible for paying the $300 for those items and the extra $20 in shipping costs. But again, the same thing would apply even if I only spent $280 on allowable items. I would still be responsible for paying that extra $20 in shipping, even though I have money in my allotment amount that could cover it. And again, that is just because this money is earmarked for certain types of purchases and you know, paying for shipping for items that are not approved does not qualify as one of those purposes. Yes, shipping costs should, they are taken out of the allotment. So if you're, you know, if you receive your allotment and it's $300, then, um, you know, your, your shipping costs will be $40. So you would really have $260 to spend on materials. So again, um, you know, that's a, another great reason to make sure that before you hit submit and after you apply your voucher code, because it will automatically apply it to shipping, um, that you're sitting there with a $0 balance. Because it can be really easy to forget about the shipping, especially when you're looking at really cool, you know, summer material items. So that was a lot of information. <laughs> So take a deep breath. Does anybody have any questions about what we just talked about with the shipping costs before we move on to the order deadline and the website demonstration? You see that last part you did that, that covered Tanisha's question, right? Our shipping mm -hmm. costs taken out of the allotment. Okay, want to make yes. sure. And for those who are new at this, I also like to send cheat sheets with everything I do. Um, so I know this is a lot of information and you will have access to the PowerPoint, but I will also create cheat sheets just because I like having, um, I like having little quick guides that I can look at without having to necessarily sift through a, you know, 44 slide deck. Um, Peggy, you're not the only one. It's just so much information and, um, you know, it is. It's easy to, to forget about things. It's easy to get confused, especially because, you know, this is just one more task on your plate, right? Um, and I know a lot of people are trying to get this done in between, you know, running a circulation desk or helping patrons. And so um, I think it's even more difficult when you can't just sit and focus on it for an hour or however long you need and, and it's interrupted. So our order deadline, as we talked about, 11.59 p.m., December 31st, 2021, which I'm going to hope that you have something a little more enjoyable to do on your New Year's Eve than, than placing a, you know, a nearly midnight order for your summer reading materials. Uh, but no judgment if this is what you are doing on your, your New Year's Eve late at night. Um, please be sure to meet this deadline. Because these voucher codes operate like online coupons, once it's turned off, it's turned off. So once we hit that expiration date, um, it's kind of like milk that has gone bad. Um, it's it's done for. <laughs> I will um, the good for those who've been around, you know though that I like to send out lots of reminders, um, just because I understand that you all are busy. Um, it's not because I'm trying to be the the nagging the nagging youth services consultant. Um, I just understand that you all are busy and this is one more thing to have to worry about. Um, and so I will send you know emails periodically. If you get my flip forward newsletter, I will always put reminders in there. 
if you're on Flip, my Flip Exchange uh, Facebook group, um, I always put deadline reminders in there as well. Um, so I try to make sure that we're, we're getting that information out because again, unexpected things happen, you all get busy. And it's also right around the holidays. So I always encourage people, it's always better to place your order sooner rather than later, uh, because then you don't have to think about it anymore. Um, but so as a side note, I do wanna point out that I am not automatically notified every time a Florida library places their order. Um, so it is entirely possible that you might place your order after I've requested and received a list of libraries who have ordered because I have to actually request that they send that to me. Um, so you may, you know, you may receive an email reminder just saying, hey, I just need to remind everybody to, to place their order. Um, and you may have already placed your order. You just weren't on that list yet because there was a gap in time. I unintentionally cause panic every year whenever I start sending out these emails, uh, for which I do want to apologize. That is not my intention. Um, but sometimes it's just kind of how that gap of time happens. Um, so if you know that you've placed your order and you still receive a reminder email from me, feel free to disregard it. Um, I'm happy, you know, if, if, you know, I sometimes people just send me a quick email back saying, hey, I placed my order on this date. That's fine. Um, I also typically wait about four weeks before I request my first list, um, you know, and then I start requesting it every two to three weeks after the fact. So, um, yeah, so if you get that email and you've placed your order, don't panic. <laughs> it's probably just because I haven't gotten that information yet. And for those who I have caused momentary panic in the past, I offer my, my heartfelt apologies, not my intention. So we are about to jump over for the demonstration and we are gonna take a drive so I can walk you through the ordering process. Before I do that, does anybody have any questions about anything we've talked about up till now? Or again, if you, you know, if you're a veteran at doing this and you've got some some tips you want to share in the chat for maybe folks who are new at this, that would also be great. So here is the CSLP website, if you have never been on it. Um, again, if you go back and watch the webinar that Luke Kralik did for us a couple of weeks ago, he walked through um, where all the resources are. And I think it's a good reminder because um, sometimes I don't think I'm good at remembering to explore all the resources that um, they have to offer. And they, add, and they add to these resources throughout the summer, which is really nice too. So over here, you will see, you should have seen it pop up in orange when I hovered over it. Um, this is where that shop link is. This is also where you go if you want to track your order. So if I click on track your order, it brings up the track your order page. So you can see here, you'll need your order ID and then the email address that was used during checkout. Um, and so if you wanna keep up with where your order is, that's a nifty way to do it. And you don't have to log in to do it, which is kind of nice too. So I went to the main shop page um, and again, since this is the main shop page, this has got everything on it. Um, and if you've not been on here yet, depending on how much time I have left at the end, um, I'm happy to kind of go through. If y'all want to peek through, I will leave that up to the group as a whole um, once I'm done doing all the, all the how-tos. So once you're here, if you want to get to the Florida specific page up here at the top on, in the green banner, if you go all the way to the right, there is an LSTA allowable tab. So if you click on that, it's gonna take you, and right now we are the only full state up here, and you can see that there is our Florida specific page. Uh, we tend to start ordering earlier than some of the other states. So this may look a little different in a couple months if you are ordering in like November or December. Um, we may not be sitting right here in the front spot, but we will be here somewhere. So if you click on that Florida, you see that we have 40 items. 
and this will be all of the items that are allowable and that your voucher will apply to. So I'm going to click on here. So again, as we talked about under that categories, you can also double check there where it says Florida. And we know that that's us. So I'm going to add, say, 20 posters because that's a totally normal amount for the same poster, right? You can see over here on the right that the cart updated. I'm highlighting it in green um, so you can see that update. And then if I hit back, there we go. So we're back on the Florida page. And I am actually going to come in here to the bags. These are a new kind of bag, just FYI. Um, I'm going to add, let's say, 50. And so that's $410. So I'm going to go to my checkout, which is right over here. And here is where you're going to find the order form. And remember how I said earlier that the voucher code is not going to have its own box when you first get in there? There's this grayed out box, and I'm highlighting in green right now. Um, that says have a voucher, click here to enter your voucher. So whenever you click on that, that voucher box is gonna pop open. And you can see it saved it from the last time I did this. So you put in your voucher code and you apply your voucher. Now, remember how I said, checking that total is your first line of defense against making an oopsie daisy moment. So if I look at my total, I realize that I have an outstanding balance of $392.50. And that is because I went way over my voucher amount. So it will show you your store credit and how much it applied. So that's what it will look like if you overspend. Going down, um, because I did say that I was going to show you where this was, um, on the order form down here if you keep going down below your billing email is your order notes so this is where I would recommend putting in a secondary point of contact for your library if you know that they're gonna have to contact you um, and even if even if you don't know again it's just good practice like I said at the very beginning um, if important information should never just sit with one person so if you are out and say CSLP has a question about your order it's good for them to have a backup contact um, so they can reach out to somebody else so I'm gonna go back because oopsie daisy I spent too much money and I'm gonna take that off I do want to point out this note up here in the red box that CSLP, the website, automatically clears out your cart every night at midnight. So if you are having to collect order information or you're wanting to sort of um, piecemeal it out, I would recommend maybe doing it off the website until you're ready to place your whole order um, because it will automatically clear every cart out at night. So I'm gonna go back to our shop. And I like socks. I can never have enough socks, right? So I'm gonna add a couple pairs of socks. Pop quiz, our socks LSTA approved items. No, they're super cute though, right? And there are squid hats. I know there are squid hats and I don't know why I'm obsessed with squid hats, but I'm gonna pull up some squid hats. <laughs> if anybody buys squid hats with their own library money, I need pictures, please. And I'm gonna add some squid hats because who doesn't need a squid hat in their life? All right, so we're back here and I've added more items. So I'm gonna put in my voucher code again because I am ready to go with my socks and my squid hat. Oh, but look at that. <laughs> That's a good point. It does get really, really hot. Um, 
but you know, penguins are all year round. So again, you can see here, I have an outstanding balance of $77.96, and that is because I added items that were not LSTA approved. And so the system will not put that voucher money towards those items. Um, so you can see how much was credited and how much I still owe. So again, that is another red flag to me that, oops, I made a mistake. I need to go fix that. So I am going to go back to my, I'm going to take that item out. I'm going to take that item out. All right. So I have, oh, it's thinking. All right. So now I'm gonna go back to my LSTA allowable because I've made some oopsie daisies. So I wanna make sure that I'm adding correct items and magnetic bookmarks. Let me add some magnetic bookmarks, which are really great. I love the magnetic bookmarks. And if you have not seen some of the artwork, I'll make some of this a little big just so you can get a little peek. And then I'm going to scoop, scooch ahead a few pages. And the buttons. All right. Oh, actually, I'm going to take that out because I just overspent by 30 cents. So I'm going to go back to my cart. I'm going to remove that. All right, so here you can see, I'm gonna to go to checkout. I'm gonna re-enter my voucher code, right? Because I've added items. Oh, and here I have $5.80. And that is because I did not account for shipping, right? So now I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do it correctly. Enter my voucher. And there is my grand total of zero dollars. So that's what you want to see whenever you end up placing your order correctly. So that is really it. Does anybody have any questions or is there any part about the, um, the website that might seem confusing or that you'd like me to, to look at a little bit more in depth? And if you ever need to know how to contact CSLP, they've got their contact information over here on the right side. Um, if you scroll down to the shipping information, They've got, you know, the timeline and the dates, and they've also got the uh, the shipping cost right there on the web page, which is really nice because then you don't necessarily have to go back looking for it. Would you all like for me to take a couple minutes and go look at the layout? Uh, Jessica asked, can we place a separate order for the manual? Yes, you can. Um, and, and I actually have several libraries who do that every year because they like to take a look at the manual um, so that they have a better idea of what they actually need and want to order. Um, Linda said it indicates the online manual is out of stock right now. I have noticed that as well, Linda. I'm not entirely sure what that is about. Um, I am happy to send an email to CSLP and ask. Um, you know, I found a couple things as well, just kind of um, 
just kind of poking around. So if you find stuff like that, feel free to send me an email or send them an email directly, but I'm also happy to pass along the message. Um, I mean, I was even in the manual last week and just kind of poking around and realized that the PowerPoints had last year's theme on it when you tried to add new slides. And one of our, and we had last year's um, summer food program banner still on our page so um, I think just like rolling out any website you know you, you try to find everything you can and then once you hit live you know you find other things um, so I will email Luke and find out what that's about um, yes Jessica you can use the voucher code as many times as you need to up until you spend all your money um, I have some larger library systems that have you know one has 16 different locations and they all place their own order so that is 16 different orders or 12 different orders on, on one voucher code so that is a nice thing it's not like a, a one a one shot situation would y'all like to see the look of the new manual they've done a lot of changes I know for those who were on the webinar with Luke he tried to give us a little a little preview uh, when it was still in stage. Um, so when you come into the manual, they've really organized it quite differently. They have this nifty little drop down box. So you can look things up by age group. I really like this activities by runtime. I think that is a very handy tool um, to be able to look up program ideas and activities based on how much time you have to spend on them. Um, instead of having to figure that out kind of on your own. And then of course they've got the types here. So is it a craft? Is it outdoors? Is it low cost? Passive or displays? Steam? They also have a calendar. Um, chapter resources. So, you know, here's the chapter headings and all the way down to the PowerPoint and the programming manuals, the slogans. So I think this is gonna be a really, a much more user-friendly way to access some of this stuff. So you can get the book lists, and then you just kind of scroll through it. And of course you can download the entire online manual if, if you so wish to do. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, Angela, I agree. I think it's going to be very user friendly. I think it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be really, really great to use. You've got your clip art. I'm trying to scroll slowly. I don't want to give anybody motion sickness. So, yes. So that's a little little taste of the manual um, and again even if you order the the, the physical manual the USB um, I, I recommend coming in here also just because they do continue sometimes to add ideas um, it's also where you know sometimes they've been very um, you know reactive to things that have happened so the summer before last when everybody was having to shift to virtual programming, there was a group of, um, you know, state reps and committee members that came up together to create a toolkit for, um, you know, virtual programming ideas. And they, I mean, they had it up within a couple of weeks. Uh, so that, you know, not something that would have necessarily been in the print manual, but it was something they were able to come in and add to the online so that they could, you know, provide resources that at the time the manual was originally created, they would have had no way to predict that everybody would have needed. So it's really nice. So does anybody else have any questions? Um, we were scheduled to go for an hour and a half, but we certainly don't have to, um, you know, I think we have a little over 15 minutes, um, but, you know, we certainly don't have to sit here if I've answered all of your questions. Um, 
but of course if anything comes up at any point you know feel free to email me feel free to call me um, I'm always happy to help um, you know I'm happy if you're trying to place your order and something just looks off I've had people send me screenshots of their cart so I could kind of help um, you know so I could kind of help figure out what might be going wrong um, Darlene I will give me just a quick second and I will hop over there and pull that up for you and I will also send it out for those who um, aren't looking at the chat Darlene asked for the Florida specific link so I will put that in the chat and you will get it again when I email you anybody else have any questions all righty well thank you all for joining me um, on a Monday morning I know it's you know time to, to kick off the week uh, Peggy said I'm amazed that I'm totally looking forward to digging into 2022 summer planning it's been a rough two years of being here but whew, this past summer was a blast i know i i continue to just be amazed at how inventive and creative everybody you know not because i'm surprised it's just um knowing that everybody's just dealing with so much and yet they're still able to put so much towards their communities which is one reason that makes florida library so special thank you for all that you do all right well y'all enjoy the rest of your monday um, we've got some other webinars coming up in the near future with flip so i hope to see you all on board for those um, but y'all enjoy the rest of your Monday and I will start sending out emails. So again, if, if you don't have an email within the next two weeks, check your spam folder. Um, and if it's still not there, then reach out to me just to make sure that, you know, tech, tech didn't tech. <laughs> Bye everybody.